What's going on guys? Today I continue my Hackintosh hardware series with the ASUS Z87WS motherboard. Now in case you didn't guess, the WS stands for workstation. What ASUS did with this motherboard was take a lot of features from higher end workstation grade motherboards and put them in a more affordable package here on the Haswell platform. The end result is a motherboard that costs under $300 and will make literally just about any type of user happy whether you're an avid gamer, content producer, or anything in between. One thing that really makes this motherboard stand out from other similar motherboards in this price range is the amount of PCI bandwidth. This motherboard packs native support for Gen 3 4-way SLI or Crossfire. Possible configurations are dual GPUs at by 16 bandwidth, 3 GPUs at by 16 by 8 by 8 or even 4 GPUs at 4-way by 8 performance. Not bad for a sub $300 motherboard. Now, when running that many GPUs, you may find yourself needing more power. Asus has thought this through and added an additional 6-pin power header for some extra juice when dealing with these high-end configurations. In terms of processors, the Z87 motherboard utilizes socket 1150 processors, which include 4th generation Intel Core i3, i5, i7, and even Xeon processors, which makes this a great choice for a home server. For the content producers out there, you can absolutely take advantage of overclocking thanks to this board's dual CPU power headers. These connectors will allow for out-of-this-world overclocks, provided you get your voltages and frequencies just right, and you have a very efficient CPU cooler. When using these high-end processors, cooling is very important, which is why ASUS put some extra effort into the cooling of the area around the processor. A combination of heat sinks and a heat pipe definitely help to keep that critical area as cool as a cucumber. The Z87WS conforms to Haswell's maximum of 32GB of memory, but takes the performance to the next level by supporting memory up to 2800 MHz, which, needless to say, is pretty ridiculous. Another advantage this motherboard has is the amount of SATA ports. Although split among a native and separate Marvell controller, this motherboard offers 10 SATA 3 ports. This is a feature that is sure to make content producers and server admins happy. Getting audio up and running will be no problem as this board uses the ALC1150 chipset. A simple kernel extension installation is all it takes to have functional audio. Some other features found here are two USB 2.0 headers, an internal USB connection, a single USB 3.0 header, both debug and temperature LEDs, onboard power and reset buttons, and a total of five 4-pin fan headers. There really is a lot to love here. Taking a quick look at the rear I.O., one thing to note is that we have a pretty unique display configuration here, which I'll get more into in just a second. From top to bottom, we have a PS2 port, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, dual eSATA ports, mini display port, HDMI and full-size display port video outputs, optical audio, dual gigabit Ethernet ports, two more USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports, as well as the usual audio outputs. One thing you won't find built in here is DVI, something to keep in mind. With that in mind, I had no problems with any of the rear display outputs. I was especially curious to see if the built-in mini display port would work, and as hoped, it fires right up. The HDMI and full-size display port also work great, and for those who like to use dual display setups, you can even use any combination of the three ports. USB compatibility is also great on this motherboard. I was able to plug any USB 2.0 or 3.0 device into any 2.0 or 3.0 port without any problems. The dual Ethernet ports are both run off of Intel i210 chipsets which work natively in OS X. One more important thing to keep in mind, ASUS Generation 8 boards, such as this one, don't allow booting from GUID drives. In order to boot successfully into OS X without the need to boot from a USB drive every time, check out the video on my channel regarding the EFI partition to allow automatic booting on this motherboard. At the end of the day, I can absolutely recommend the ASUS Z87WS for your Hackintosh. The EFI fix can be kind of a hassle initially, but once the system is up and running, the performance is fantastic. The amount of PCI bandwidth here is impressive for the price range and is something that will keep power users happy without needing to invest in the more expensive X79 platform. The cooling system, number of SATA ports, and I.O. compatibility also make this motherboard a great choice. Down in the video description, I've included a link to a multibeast file which has the configuration you'll need to get the machine up and running with the exception of that EFI partition work I mentioned earlier. Be sure to let me know what you think of the ASUS Z87WS down below in the comments. If you like this video, prove it to me by just destroying that like button. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.